Welcome to Global Health and Wellness Practitioners YouTube channel, where we're giving exposure to great practitioners while educating and promoting comprehensive health and wellness globally. Today we're speaking to Alicia Pine on finding our heart's truest desires. Alicia is based in California as a certified transformational coach. She's a former Eileen Ford international fashion model and a loving mom of three teens. One of Alicia's biggest accomplishments is going from not having a voice to public speaking with ease now. So welcome, Alicia, to the show. I'm so glad you're here and to hear your story and where you've come from and where you're headed is very exciting. So if you could share a little bit about your background. Yes. I grew up in Southern California and I was a very shy little kid and I had a stutter and my mom took me to the doctors and the doctors said for everyone in the house to be quiet and then um, I could talk and that actually cured the stutter but it didn't cure this shyness until I was about 14 years old. My dad stumbled into a photography shop and decided that I was going to start modeling on the weekends. And so I got discovered by the top agent in the city at 15 years old and moved to a house in uh, the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And then at 16 years old, I moved to Tokyo. She sent me off to Tokyo and I was able to do modeling for about almost 20 years of my life. And it was an amazing job, amazing life. And the only thing that I didn't appreciate about the modeling was that I wasn't being seen for who I really was inside. I was, you know, it was a very surface um, industry where you're very labeled and stuff like that. Then I ended up getting married and settling down and had three beautiful kids, but I felt a sense of emptiness within and I couldn't understand where it was coming from. I had, you know, the quote unquote perfect life with the, you know, the beautiful house and the husband and all that stuff. But I think that I had tied some of my identity to being this wor working woman and then being a mom, I, I started to not value myself as much for some reason. And then, you know, my ex-husband started to not value as, me as well. And I ended up just starting to feel very much alone with not following my heart's desires. And so I ended up uh, getting divorced. And when I went to therapy, I was really at rock bottom of my life. And the thing about my marriage that I realized um, through the therapy was that I was, you know, put in an act of being this perfect family and not really communicating to my ex-husband what was going on inside of me. So the therapist held a mirror to my face asked me how the person in the mirror was doing. And I actually had to make stuff up because I couldn't, I was so numb and my life was so much about serving everyone else that I completely lost my voice, lost my power, my sense of meaning and purpose in life besides serving. Yeah. So I, I ended up becoming a hairdresser. And when I was a hairdresser, I realized that I really love to serve and support people. And I had this natural gift of making people feel better. And so I went into a seminar in 2018 and uh, it was really amazing because I, I realized that I wasn't taking full ownership for my past and, you know, there were certain aspects of my childhood that I had a lot of shame, guilt. I also realized that I put on this happy face for my mom because I got attention for being the quiet, sweet one. And so that sense of who I was, was all about accommodating everyone else. So the thing that I realized in doing a lot of deep inventory within myself was that there was no way that my ex-husband could have known what I wanted because I couldn't articulate it to him. Uh, people that are really good at asking for their, for what they want, um, it's because they practice it all the time, right? Like the, if you look at a highly successful person, they're asking for people to do stuff all day long. Uh, but when you're just being a caretaker to people, you get really, really rusty at not asking the people around you for what you want because you don't want to burden them. You think you can do it all yourself. You're this lone ranger. So when I took off that people pleaser lone ranger mask, I realized that I had a lot to give and to serve to people. I had this voice inside of me that wanted to come out. And, you know, I did not want other people to have you know, those marriages break apart because they're afraid to ask for what they want or they feel like they're being controlled or they feel like they're uh, not feeling feeling heard. And so when I took off 
from being a victim of that circumstance to owning that I chose to, you know, based on my childhood and following the patterns and all that stuff. But um, what can I do now? And that brought me to a much more empowered uh, place within myself that if I want something to get done now, I have to be in charge of doing it. You know, it's like the world is not going to adjust to you. You've got to you've got to ask for what you want. And so that was a very freeing moment in my life when I started to take ownership of it in 2018. The other thing we spoke about before was about coming into alignment with our true self and, yeah. our, and our wants and our desires and our, our commitment to our service. Yeah. You want to talk about that and how it attracts. I would love to. So, so there are things within all of us, I believe that are innate in us. Like for me, I can only use myself as an example, but for me, I love people. I love lighting people up and, and, and asking them the questions that are going to get them to what they love, right? So when I used to do hair, the, one of my first questions I would ask my clients was, what do you love to do? And a lot of times what I heard was, I used to do this and I used to do that and I used to do this, but what it did was it perked within them. Why am I not doing more of what I love? You know. And so um, when you uh, start to follow uh, what your heart is calling you to do, um, and getting out of that story of me being this helpless victim, shameful person from childhood or whatever, whatever stories are blocking you, but you really start to take charge of your life in a way that uh, what's inside of your heart is leading you versus, you know, in that sense of contribution. And then what happens is you start attracting people that are all about contribution as well. And, you know, making that a practice of what you do for your job, it's like you get to just be who you are and uh, and make it in the world and you're doing it for your uh, livelihood so and i think that's a really exciting place to be and i feel like everyone on the planet has something to give and contribute you know and when you line up to that um, it's not work anymore you know it's it's your pleasure so so thank you alicia for joining us today i'm so excited about your passion for life and finding our your voice our voice i'm saying <laughs> finding our voice together and finding our truth together and if you would like to find alicia she does transformational group sessions on zoom thank you so much for joining us here we have lots of practitioners with great information coming ahead so please stay tuned and join our community